Good morning to each and every one of you. What an honor and a pleasure again to be uh, before you. And uh, for whatever reason, I need to warn you that I don't know if it's just what's been going on around me or the things the last few weeks and what we've been uh, involved in or just uh, because of personal nature. I am feeling awfully emotional this morning. And then to see all of you here, it really does something for me. And let me tell you why. Because the last few weeks, I've heard folk who and seen folk who have been assaulted because of their culture, their heritage, and their religion, and almost nothing is said. But I've also heard folk who have been assaulted because of their assault weapons, and it seems like the world's going to come to an end. I'm bothered. I'm troubled. But I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to see you making a statement by your presence and by this day. And so I commend you for nothing else than bringing attention to the fact that we have a state that is diverse and a state that believes in this state becoming more than just okay. But as someone said earlier, make it more than just great again. Make it a state where all are welcome and involved. I uh, am in the midst of caucus right now, and I need to get back to that, but I did want to come in to share with you. And three things jumped out at me that I wanted to share before I have to rush back. One is, I would adjure you to be prepared. Be prepared. And that's what you're doing right now. You are preparing yourself in this very instance by coming to this place and showing those who are here that this house belongs to you. This is your capital. You have a right to be here. Matter of fact, you have a responsibility to be here. You have an obligation to be here to serve and to be present and to be visible and to make your visions and your voices heard. Be prepared. Be prepared because really, I wish I could tell you what's coming down the pike. I wish I could tell you what assault will be next. I wish I could tell you how they will approach and attack us. And someone asked me once as I stopped uh, talking about being prepared, let me tell you why I'm, I'm excited about that. It's because, listen, I turned 64 years old this year. And, and if you can do the math, and you know that I was born in 1954, and I grew up in the 60s and in the 70s during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. I was there when Dr. King was assassinated. I have experienced and I have seen the last vestiges in a visible form of racism, Jim Crow. Yeah, in Memphis it was visible when I was a child. We were isolated. I went to, when I was from kindergarten to the eighth grade, I went to an all black school. And then I was thrust into the integration process with the idea it will be better. But you know, I don't think it was better because when I was in the first grade, Miss King knew my mama, knew my daddy. Miss King knew me. Miss King took a special interest in me, not because of any other reason, but I was one of probably 28 other kids that she knew that if she didn't get through to us, we would have a difficult time the rest of our lives, even in that environment back in 1961. I don't know if it was the same thing when I was a junior in high school. I don't know if Miss Rose really felt the same way. She didn't know my mama. She didn't know my daddy. She didn't know what was expected of me as an African-American child. She tried her best. And the reason I really made it is because I did have a mother and a father who encouraged me and who pushed me to be the best that I can be. Because I grew up in a time when I saw the problems, the difficulties, I saw all of the discrimination that can be described, I saw it with my own eyes. So that's why I'm here and I stand with you. 
And anytime Adam calls me, I'm going to stand with him. And I'm going to stand with you because I'm not alone. I'm a, a priest of a representative jet. Representative jet is exactly right. He told you the experience of Native Americans. Listen, we go through that as Americans. That's what makes us Americans, this diversity. That's what makes this country great. The fact that our shores welcome folk in, sometimes in bondage. But we changed that. We didn't give up. But all of the diversity that comes into this nation has made this nation the greatest nation in the world. And it's because of you. So don't let anyone dissuade you, discourage you, or back you up from your right. You have a right to be here, a responsibility. Be prepared. But I wish I could just leave it at being prepared. I need you to be prepared to resist. Resist those who would say that you no longer need to show up and that everything is all right. No, you need to look at the, read, read the newspaper, listen to CNN, watch MSNBC, just watch any station and you'll know that we need to resist some things that are coming at us. We don't need more guns in our schools. We need fewer guns in our schools. Yeah, I can, you know, I can imagine one of my teachers when I was in high school walking around with a gun. The first thing we would have had medics up there all the time for people shooting themselves in the foot. It wouldn't have been beneficial. We need to resist and let's resist this idea that we don't need the investment of those who come from places other than within not only the continental United States, but Alaska and Hawaii. We need all of the diversity that we can get our hands on. I kind of like myself, you know that? Yeah, you ought to like yourself too, but I kind of like myself. But I don't want 10 other George Youngs because I get tired of me sometimes. So I sure don't want everybody else just like me. We need the diversity that gives us the richness of who we are. America the beautiful is a tapestry that is not one color, but is a diverse coloring of threads and patterns that make us who we are. I need you to be prepared, but be prepared to resist, but also be prepared to move on. Be prepared to get involved. Yes, it does matter. If you're Native American, it matters because you need to vote, you need to get involved, and you need to run for public office. If you're Hispanic, it does matter. You need to vote, you need to get involved, and you need to run for office. It does matter. If you're Muslim, you need to vote, you need to get involved, and you need to run for office. That's how we're going to overcome. That's why we're going to make America great as it always has been. What is really happening is folk who are trying to make America ungreat. It has been great. And my friend Imam Inchasi would say, when they tell you to go home, I like them when folk tell me, why don't you go home? I'm like him. When they tell me that, I said, no, I'm not going back to Memphis. I like Oklahoma City. Because it is my home and I have made it my home. And I made a decision to do what I can to provide for the opportunities of all of those who, like me, have to fight and struggle sometimes just to have my voice heard. And so again, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and sharing and being a part of this day. You are making America great. God bless you.